Well, good morning, folks. It is early in the morning. I'm here on the Tennessee River once again. It's cold. It's 29 degrees right now. The surface temperature is 46 degrees. Uh, we're getting on into winter now, and uh, it's getting cold on top right here. Let's see. Woo! You talking about cold. But today, let's do something a little bit different. Uh, today, I'm going to target bluegill and shellcracker. I'm going to be fishing pretty deep, anywhere from 18 to 20 foot, possibly 24 foot of water, in search of bluegill and shellcracker. Um, here in the south, those two species of panfish are the most dominant. Although we have a lot of different species, old green sunfish, long ear sunfish, we have a few pumpkin seed. But, uh, yeah, today we'll just focus on those two. Uh, I'm going to find them deep or try to. And uh, I'm fishing for supper. When it comes to eating fish, and I'm not a big fish eater, but in the wintertime, fish of any species are a lot better eating. Or they are to me. They taste a lot better. But bluegill and shellcracker, to me, has the best taste of all fish in fresh water. So those are the ones I like to eat. And uh, let's get with it. Quit talking so much. It's about fishing. Uh, hey, man. Whoa. All right. <laughs> they are really turning that water loose. Kind of, we've had a lot of influx of rain here in the Tennessee Valley. Old Bessie, she crunk up just like that. Yamaha. I tell you what, yammer hammers. Let's go on towards the dam right here. I'm gonna take it easy. As y'all can see, it's real foggy out here. Real foggy and cold. Love it. There ain't nothing like it. The sport of fishing. And now that's just my opinion, folks, but uh, I'm getting to where I don't think it's an opinion anymore. I, I just about say it's fact. But uh, let's go on. Let's find them. Let's search them out and find these fish. They deserve a hook in their mouth. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I can't help it, it's adrenaline rush. And it is a rush. Well, second to none. Okay, here we is. And uh, I've been looking at the depth finder right here. I hadn't seen anything yet. But this area right here usually holds some big bluegill and shellcracker. And it averages about 17 to 18 foot deep, folks. And today what I'm gonna be using is a real light rod. I've been using this for crappie. It's a Cadence CR5, six foot long, light action rod. Real, real flimsy, spongy, with a Cadence reel. Loaded with two pound test line, but my rig is only a small split shot, about the size of a BB, a size uh, six, excuse me, um, eagle claw rotating hook my bait is going to be simple walmart night crawlers <laughs> that's it um, now this is a good way to use micro jigs right here uh, i used to get over the top of these fish in vertical jig with micro jigs for these fish but just the night crawler is what we're going to use today because i'm I'd like to catch me some big shell cracker if they're in here. Now I'm just gonna cut about one third of this worm off to start with. Put it on the hook and I have a distance of about 10 inches right here between the hook and the split shot. The main thing is I'm wanting to have some fun. I'm just gonna come through there and hook him just like that. 
see how the end of that night crawler's moving oh my goodness i'm gonna make a cast out here let's just start against the wall let it hit the bottom uh right here's some fish let's look at this y'all see that right there now that looks like shad on this particular fish finder it's a hummingbird 160 and it's an old fish finder uh old unit but i tell you what it's accurate i mean i find crappie with that little dude it's been a good one so we have shad in here so there's got to be some bluegill and shell cracker in here by now we're on the bottom right there and all I'm going to do is just hold my rod and just barely move it like you would a Carolina rig. And we're going to search out and find out where these dudes are. Somewhere in here, there's a concentration of fish. There's a bat. There we go. Let's see what we got right here. Now that old deep water got us a shell cracker. There we go. Now that's eating size right there. We're going to put him in the bucket. Now that fish is bleached out. Y'all notice how bleached out he is? But yeah, that's a red ear sunfish. That's what I'm after. Now they're delicious this time of year. And he swallowed my hook. Sure did. So, <laughs> I'll just tie me another hook on. I try to set the hook as quick as I can, but now shell crackers are notorious for swallowing small hooks. Uh, but now that one is big enough. Let's put him in the bucket in there. All right. Hey, let's catch another one. I'm going to tie me another hook on here and focus on this area here. Having a little bit of trouble out here, folks. That's fishing. But uh, when you catch a shell cracker, especially in deep water like this, I'm sitting over 18 feet of water, there's more. So we're going to see if we can't catch some more and possibly bluegill. There's fish. There we go. Come on up here. Let's see what you are. fighting pretty good cold as that water is he's doing real good what do we got right here my goodness what a bluegill now that's a good bluegill right there northern strain bluegill that thing's bigger in my hand I believe or about the same size Tell you what let's put him in the bucket in there with that shell cracker that's pretty fish ain't it now he come out of deep water same place that shell cracker did and i'm using half a night crawler and barely hooking it barely hooking it so it'll look alive that one's beat up a little bit but let's make another cast out there and I'm letting that little split shot carry that down in 18 feet of water, folks. And the reason I can fish this little split shot like this is because of this light line. Two pound line is awful light. Uh, once it gets to the bottom, which it will, will here in a minute, I just take my time and just slide it across the bottom. Hunting for them fish. And this is a real rocky area, too. There's a lot of rocks about like that. Just one after another scattered out through here. No shell cracker and bluegill. I kind of get in, or in and around those rocks. And, uh, okay, it's on the bottom right now. And I'm just barely moving it. Letting it settle. And I'm feeling for the rocks. Once I feel a rock, I'll just leave it there. And then a lot of times, they'll pick it up and just start crawling off with it. There's one. About time, had a little lull in the activity here. God, 
golly. That's a big bluegill right here, folks. Or it is for the Tennessee River. Look here, what a bluegill. Now that's a man. <laughs> that is a big son of a gun. I'm gonna put him in the bucket, there ain't no doubt. He's big enough to fillet. Let's put him on in there. My goodness, what a bluegill. I don't know about that monster shell cracker today. I caught that fish right there along that wall. You know, there's a rock pile right here. And I, I just made a cast parallel with this wall right here. And hey, we'll try that again. That was a big one. For the Tennessee River, that's a big one. Let's catch another one. There we go. There we go. That one. We'll see you. <laughs> oh, that one ain't big enough to eat. Several boats out here today. I'm surprised it's so cold. But now, let's let that one go. He ain't quite big enough. He won't quite make the grade there. Let's catch us another deep water bluegill or shell daddy. There's fish right there. Yep. That one's way out there. Now he's doing some pulling down there. I feel some little bit of head shaking going on. I believe he's gonna be another eater. My goodness, yeah. That's a big gill. That is a good one. Fat, hell, you talking about good eating. I'm starving to death, folks. So I'm keeping a lot more. I want you to look at that bucket. It's half full of good ones. And I've probably caught uh, 50 or 60 that was too small, but there's really a lot of fish in here. I'm being selective, selective harvesting. This is a lot of fun. No doubt, it's a split shot rig and I'm treating it like a Carolina rig. And this two pound test line, I tell you, it's a must because there's a lot of rocks out here, you see? And I'm wanting to get by with fishing the lightest split shot as I possibly can to keep from getting hung up. So the light line allows it to go down there in that 18 foot of water. And it, and it really makes a difference. You just have to be careful about how you set the hook. It's just really a sweep of your rod instead of a, just a hard hook set. There we go. Wow. That one hit right up under the boat. That one's pulling too. <laughs> My goodness. I hate to flip this fish in with two pound line. I'm gonna try it. Oh my goodness. Now there, that's what I've been talking about, folks. That's what I've been trying to catch today. But that is a shell cracker. And that one, that fish hit right up under the boat. I was about ready to reel it in, to tell you the truth. But look at there, what a pretty red ear. Red ear sunfish. Let's put him in the bucket. I've ended up with far more than what I thought. God, that's a big shell cracker. I believe that's going to be the end of it for the day. I got plenty of fish, uh, more than what I wanted or needed. But we're going to, I tell you, that's good eating. That was well worth the trip. That woman tells me what to do too damn blame much. They ain't no woman, okay, gonna tell me what to do. Well, folks, that got her today. It was a good day of fishing. I tell you what, this, a split shot rig, uh, fish that way in deep water, I catch them big shell cracker and bluegill. 
Uh, here on the Tennessee River, um, you can catch bluegill and shellcracker in places uh, relatively shallow, but the bigger fish, no doubt, goes deeper. Uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 foot, sometimes deeper during the winter. Our fish now are going real deep because we're getting a lot of cold weather. It's been a really cold fall. I'm going to call this a winter pattern uh, today because these fish are definitely in a winter, winter pattern, the, the bluegill and shellcracker or red ear sunfish. But I want to give a special shout out to Brian Beasley, watches this channel. He's been real sick, folks. And uh, we're praying for him that he gets better. Uh, he needs to go fishing. He needs to get rid of that and go fishing. We ain't got time for stuff like that. And in closing, I want to say one more thing. Now, today I stayed real comfortable. It was real cold, windy. And I wore a uh, Vin, it's called a Vin Mori heater vest. And it was sent to me uh, by Max. And thank you very much, Max. What I'm going to do is look up the um, where you can get one of these jackets. If you fish in the wintertime or hunt, this thing right here is battery operated, and it's got about it's got several heating elements in the jacket, and it will keep you warm and comfortable. And that's important out here. When in the wintertime, it gets cold, and as you get uh, where when you go to shaking and shivering, it kind of breaks your concentration. But if you're a fisherman, or a hunter, this this will get the job done, no doubt. I'm going to try and find uh, the link and put it in the, in the description box for y'all if you want one of these. Uh, it sure did help me. And I'm going to tell y'all something else. Hey, thank y'all very much for watching. I appreciate, like I always say, the great comments. We're going to do some fishing. I don't care how cold it gets now. And, hey, woo. And remember, don't fish when you can, but I call this good.